that's a little better is go with the constant comment tea and pour orange juice in it. <laughs> oh, that is fancy. That is really good. I think that'd be too much. That's too fancy for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tea bag and some fucking orange juice. <laughs> I mean, having tea and orange juice at the same time is a little different. I understand. Yeah. Especially the time I mean, period we live. Do they even have tea and oranges at the store right now? Right. Throw some champagne and you've got a really fancy mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> My grocery store it as well is is lacking in a lot of a lot of things. A lot of, a lot uh, of weird the, things. Uh the fruits and vegetables <laughs> look it's real picked over. Yeah. It's not good. But well, I think we talked about this the last champagne. time. I think we talked about this last time because I was doing Christmas shopping, Christmas dinner shopping and yeah there were so many things strange things that you'd think would just be there and they weren't so i had to go to a couple of different stores i guess i'm really starting to see it a lot more since it's been a month since we've yeah. talked it has. i missed you it guys has. no it's been it was too long <laughs> there was a lot going <sighs> on last month yeah. <sighs> and now it's all over for the next year But that's okay. We have Omicron, you know, to keep things exciting. So yeah, we got to end that, and we already had Betty White die. Don't. And Bob Saget yesterday. Bob Saget. They always go in threes. Who's well, the we third also one? had we had Sydney Poitier a few days ago. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. You know, yeah. The Bob Saget came Betty out of nowhere. White he was sixty-five. Poitier are up here. I, Bob Saget down down here. Yeah, but <laughs> the man who brought kid. us. Original full cat house. videos. Yeah. Full ha- I was a full house fan. I was full I mean, house. Was, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was full house and growing pains and all of the other weird sitcoms. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we all drinking this evening? Oh, we, we haven't even started. Oh, we got to run the thing, and, and, and yeah, right. That's part of the actual thing. That's right. It's been yeah, so that's long. Part of the I can't real show. You can start drinking, but uh, you know, oh, right. I, I have started uh, drinking. That's, that's, several a- several that's, hours that's ago. Question. <laughs> okay. I have I have a child over right now that has run me into my bunker. So I'm. Oh no. You get two. You get all right. You have one boy. It's fine. You have another boy. It's fine. You have two of them in the same place at one time. It's like 18 kids all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. They just kind of explode and you don't know what's happening. <laughs> yes. Yep. I'm going to ask because we have a little bit of reverb going on. So someone's speakers is being re-picked up on the microphone. I have the earbuds in and Facebook is, turned up, is shut down. So. Could be me. Could be. Fix? Let's try this. No, I talk yes. really loud. Will that work now? Aha, it's fixed. Yeah, you're still getting oh, a little. And so am I. But it's a lot better. So yeah, Let I just need to keep the down. microphone a little bit further away from the, 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 the speakers. Well, I, turned I know the speakers down. have to be on because there's another person over there. <laughs> I turned mine down, but it's still a little bit. So. Oh, I no, picked up you know these what? really cool Here's things. Built-in speakers. That's why it's doing that. Hang on just a second. Oh, you have built-in speakers? That's weird. Right? Because okay. I got these really cool things for Christmas. And they're, Bluetooth, they're Bluetooth earbuds. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. And All they the plug cool into this to those. charge. So you charge the battery that's in this thing. So if you run out, you just, put it, you just slap them back in there. There's a magnet that holds them in. That's yeah. That's what yeah. I've got. I love them. Sorry so about the I have reverb. one in right it's now, and I sneak this into my office, <laughs> and I leave my phone on, listening to my music all day. So I have my headset on for call, making calls. You can never tell. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> and then at lunch, I just switch them out. So I just have the left one. <laughs> one day I'll get caught. But until then, I am happy. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> and that's all uh, that matters. 
Rita says, are those bows? Do you have those bows earbuds? Um, I can't remember the name of the company that does these right off. Uh, it looks like a little butterfly as a symbol. I can't see it. You're real. Yeah, dumb, I... But I believe you. No, yeah, I know. I have the box. I'll I'll get the information. It just happens to be in three rooms away from me. The kids are playing Minecraft and they're very vocal about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's uh let's run the thing and then we can get really right. Okay. Do it. Well hello, once again you have found a Texas Steampunk Connection. Broadcasting to you throughout the multiverse, themeverse, from our various bunkers and airships. With me, as always, is Fax, Gentleman Adventurer. Hello, hello. With me is Jack from Steam Chest. Hello. <laughs> and with us today, Master Blue Stocking from <laughs> Steampunk Dollhouse Podcast. So once again, we are here to talk, oh, probably about Steampunk, most likely, because that's what this is about. Thank you for listening to the Texas Steampunk Connection. And here we, we are. are. Here we are. Woo! Oh. Happy New Year. Christmas. Happy New Year. Yeah, we, we haven't had one since or financially. Uh, Christmas. <laughs> All the ways. <laughs> I have to apologize. I feel like it was it was my fault that we missed the last episode of uh, of 2020. Um, 2020 or 20. We, I mean, it probably was your fault we lost the episode. Now we're 2022. Two. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my fault. Um, I'll start by saying there was there's this Google Fiber that came through our neighborhood, and the sales guy was really uh, convincing, and I signed up for Google Fiber. And so uh, the day before our show was supposed to be on, which was Monday after Christmas, we had the we had the day off, so I had the guy come in and connect the new Google Fiber, and they chopped off my old uh, uh, old cable internet. Oh no! Oops. And everything was yeah, great. No, and he left to his next job, and in an hour, the whole thing had gone kaput, stopped working entirely. <laughs> no. And I'm I texting Google. I'm like, it's not working. You got to come back. They're like, oh, we can't. We can't bring him back. We're really backed up, and uh, we can get him back in a couple of days. Oh no! So we lost like a day of work because Erica needed to go back to uh, back to working next the next day Tuesday, and uh, and then I wasn't able to to show up for the show, and. That Jack and Blue Stocking made up excuses of their own, and we didn't have it. I'm sorry. It was <laughs> no, we were just going to blame you for sure. Just okay. blame you straight up because you weren't going to be here anyway. So, <laughs> you guys have families that you were spending time with, I'm sure, and yeah. But uh, but we're back, back with the new year, the new season. <laughs> this is like season six for this show. Yep, it's been a while. Uh, which is which is crazy? Is the the is Jack frozen? Jack, are you frozen? No, there oh, is. I mean, I, 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 <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> yeah, apparently my phone had had an issue. I'm in the back room, so I don't have a, as much connection as I normally would. So that might happen a couple of times. So bear with me bear with, with yeah, my own technical, my issues. own technical issues. Sorry, let me get the cat out of the way. <laughs> Your saber tooth tiger out of the way. Yes. <laughs> He's very large. Ah, <laughs> that's oh, great to but be in back, your new everybody. Room, Jack, I, I see you do have a new chair that looks very fancy. It is like a throne. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my, this is my room. So I'm actually Ooh. sitting on my bed at the moment. Ooh, you sleep like a king. I, I do. I do. <laughs> I do sleep like a king. This is my favorite mattress. <laughs> I have a favorite mattress, apparently. Your priorities I just rotate change them out with my unfavorite. It's got a closet over there. Yeah. 
know, when you get older, the things that were important to you are very different. <laughs> yeah, when you travel outside of your home and you stay at someone else's house and you sleep in their guest bed, then you come home. You don't realize how nice your own bed is until you like lay down and your body, your your back just like spreads out and all of a sudden <laughs> the pain you've been feeling for the last four days just goes away. Oh right, this is my bed, no wonder. Exactly. You slide back into your divot. <laughs> yeah, just my divot just <laughs> everything locks into place. <sighs> Were you traveling to see family over the holiday? That would, uh... Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I went back to my mom's place. Hung out with my brother, my uh, nieces that are now 16 and 19. And uh, it was fun. It was fun. A lot of fun. We cooked steaks and it was 90 degrees outside. We actually left. I mean, we got, we, we couldn't do Christmas, Christmas. So we did uh, th- um, New Year's. So we're outside st- cooking steaks. 90 degrees, we're sweating. By the time we got the steaks done, which you know that like a steak is like a 10 to 25 minute ordeal once you get the fire lit and all that stuff. You're actually cooking it, right? Well, the temperature dropped from 90 degrees to 28 in 11 minutes. Where were you? We were up in there, San Angelo, Texas. You know the day, like, so the day that everything got ridiculously cold within the day. It happened. Yeah, it weird. yeah, we went from 90 degrees to 28 in 11 minutes where I was. The steaks literally almost turned to ice cubes before we could get them in the house. I know. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Like, we're sitting out there, like, having fun and drinking beers to the point where, like, none of us had coats. <laughs> so we're freezing to death or we're trying to get the steaks cooked so we can go inside. <laughs> Winter in Texas, it's weird. Yep. It's like, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Yeah. Literally, yeah. Or, you know, of course, we're almost in February now. I, I'm i trying not to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> buy some toilet paper. Just <laughs> buy some water, some toilet paper, some easy-to-make food, and just kind of bear with it. See what happens. Firewood. Yeah. Get firewood. I don't have so, a fireplace. I don't either. But yeah. set a fire you in your living room. room. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Well, you set a fire outside to help milk, milk help milk the snow if you need to. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, last year we were we downloaded a bunch of episodes of The Mandalorian, and we just got in bed and watched The Mandalorian on my iPad. <laughs> we only had one hour of power every forty eight hours. That's so why I, we frantically downloaded. Up. Yeah, so we we our, our phones we turn on message family saying we're okay and then turn the phone off again. Uh, we did watch The Mandalorian. That was our one thing. Um, let's see what else was it? Oh, since we only had one hour every forty-eight, I rigged up one of our uh, power wands, uh, the thing that has multiple plugs in it, and put in our Instapot, my coffee machine. And the crock pot. And so since it was already about 48 degrees in my home, I didn't really care less. I didn't really care about the fact that, you know, I have meat sitting out because it's just as cold in the refrigerator as it is on out, you know, in my kitchen. So anytime I had power come on, all three of those things would kick on. The heater would kick on for an hour, approximate 45 minutes most of the time, because it, we weren't on a rolling anything. It was, they would just couldn't yeah. keep the power up. And so, I would have at least, like, I'd wake up at six in the morning and I could smell coffee and, like, steak or pork roast and beans. And I'm just like, hell yeah, we're good for a little while longer. <laughs> Quick before it gets cold, chug the coffee. Yeah, there was no rolling, but we have a gas stove. So we were, I was able to just take a chicken out of the freezer, drop it into a pot, and just leave it, the stove on. All day, toss some rice in later. Yeah, but yeah, that was. I had a space heater pointed underneath the the sink, the ki- because our kitchen plumbing is on the on an exterior wall. Ooh. So as soon as the power would come on, I'd shuffle into the kitchen and turn on the space heater so it would heat up under. Yeah, there was not a lot of sleep for anybody. I don't think those 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 that week. I mean, it was outside of all the survival bits. It was actually really calming. 
and it reminded me of a time when humanity basically had to work really hard for about six months of the year and then hunker down for about three of them and do nothing but just think of new things to make their life easier once the snow went away. Well, and tell stories. And eat. Yeah. Tell stories, make cool stuff, and eat. <laughs> Why can't we do that for two to three months a year? I think that that, that ship has sailed. <laughs> Damn technology and civilization. Man, I'm I'm confused as to you guys like got power for forty five minutes every two days. Oh, when you our didn't power went out, it was gone. Oh. It was how many days? Three. Three days straight. Uh oh no well, near the end. Yeah. Once everything started melting, but like for the first four days, we had power for like a couple hours every two days. Yeah. But then there was that nice long stretch where the power was completely out and our water started running out because there's a water tower over here, but the pump wouldn't turn on because there's no power. So yep. you just like, you notice the water pressure was just slowly oozing downwards. And so everyone had their sinks on to keep plumbing from freezing. Yep. We already filled up both of our bathtubs with water so we could at least flush the toilets. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, no, that was, it was fun. It was fun. Too much fun. Yeah, but- I mean, the outages were so inconsistent, though, because where I am in Denton, we were, we had like half an hour, and then we'd be out for several hours, and we would get like 45 minutes, and we'd be out for seven hours, but mm-hmm. people that I knew, you know, that lived five miles away in Corinth had nothing. I mean, I had friends that had to flee to other parts of Texas because they had no power and no water, so it was very random and inconsistent. There was no rolling. Whatever they were trying no. to tell us was not true. It wasn't true. Now, I did also know that they were... (laughs) Shocking. (laughs) However, if you live close to a hospital and you're on the same grid as the hospital, that stays up permanently. Yeah, Yeah. because a friend of mine lives near a warming station. My advisor, actually, she lives near a warming station, so she never lost power. Yeah, so if you live near a warming station or a hospital or whatever it was, then yeah, you you were good to go, but... Yeah, but the was... main problem was is the fact that the power to keep the pipes warm enough to allow natural gas to flow through them failed. So they couldn't actually start more generators once they ended. And they couldn't keep them going because the, once you start running natural gas quickly through a pipe, it gets cold. So, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was bad. Here's what I, whole thing. And here's what gets me. They're trying to blame this all on, oh, yeah, all the solar and the wind failed and just catastrophically knocked down the system. I'm just like, all right, so, yeah, I can see the fact that you'd have to de-ice the wind, you know, the windmills, maybe. But solar? You knock the snow off, and it works again. And you start looking at it like, oh, so you're blaming 8% of Texas's power on, on the whole issue? It tells me, what happened about the, 90, the other 92%? Why did it fail then? Uh, yeah. Yep. And what a lead into what are we drinking? <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, who wants to start? Mine is boring. I'm drinking the same Apothic Red. I usually am. Hey, if you like it, you like it. and Go with it. I like a routine. I have ADHD. I work well with routines, including what I drink. <laughs> oh, crud. Is that actually a key factor of ADHD is routine? Um keeping me focused routines are that's a conversation for that different con but yeah that's i need routines to keep me focused that's why i've been able to get through school because i have 12 different organizers and planners and systems and a husband who helps keep me on track but routine is really important oh crap i might be yeah. ADHD. a lot of people our age are especially women my age but again different conversation <laughs> Well, I'm I'm really excited to tell people about what I want, but depends. Dax, what do you have? Uh, well, I, I talk about this at least once every year. I am not drinking alcohol tonight. I am drinking that hot Dr Pepper. <gasps> oh, we're, we're in hot okay. Dr Pepper weather. <laughs> uh, don't knock it till you try it. I didn't uh, say anything. No, you didn't have to. It, I could <laughs> read it on your face. I don't like um, Dr. Pepper anyway, so I'm not a good judge of that. <laughs> this is this is the most bizarre stuff. I mean, there's there's nothing to it except you take your Dr. Pepper or in this case my 
H-E-B branded knockoff Dr. Pepper. You know, warm it up till just short of boiling, but don't boil it. And then you uh, put a, a couple of uh, wheels of lemon sliced onto the top. And that is the most important thing. The, the lemon uh, changes the, the uh, nature of the drink entirely. And it's hot and soothing on a cold night like we're getting tonight. Uh, it's awesome. And weird. <laughs> Does the lemon cut the sweet? Because that's my problem with Dr. Pepper is that it's so sweet. It just... Uh, kind of. I mean, it's still a sweet drink. It's like drinking sweet hot tea, sort of. Okay. I I've had it, and I will admit it's it's one of those things that, if offered, I'm definitely going to have it again. It's just it's never something I'm going to ever think about making on my own. <laughs> it's true. I I probably wouldn't have it except there's this show where we talk about drinking. <laughs> I mean, that, that's fair. One day I may come on here with a purple cow and have to explain myself. I might have to make some mold wine next time. <sighs> which is excellent. I haven't made that in a while. And before the show, we were talking about Russian tea. Yes. Which, Russian uh, tea is fantastic. That's what uh, Erica, who is off camera over here, is drinking. Uh, that is crazy. She said this was very popular in the 70s. When we were kids, she thought this was super fancy. I never heard of it. Instant tea and tang and a package of powdered lemonade. Oh, yeah. No, I, I have Lex over here now listening in, and she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So apparently, you somehow missed the 70s or something. Crown clothes. Weird. <laughs> I'm sure the <laughs> Russians would be offended. <laughs> Do you ever go what to is this tea you speak of? I, I was in I was in Pennsylvania and some little deli was advertising real Texas Coney Island wieners. What? And I got very angry. Pennsylvania is a weird place. <laughs> it's like you're offending the people from Texas and Coney Island at the same time. You're offending everyone. Yeah. They're bigger yeah. than Coney Island. <laughs> They might be bigger than Coney Island wieners. That might be right. Yeah. Lex is over here explaining some things. <laughs> so Pennsylvania is weird. It is. But a lot of times when they say Texas anything, it just means it's like gratuitously bigger than it yeah. would be the other place. Yeah, Texas size. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's actually a thing pretty much all over the United States. And Texas likes it so much that we start making like Texas waffles and Texas toast. <laughs> everything. We're just like, we're going we're gonna to feed this because it feeds our ego. We don't need the rest of the United States to encourage us to do this. We would do it. We would do it anyway. anyway. But we're also being encouraged by places like California. Did you know the star on California's flag is because Texas has a star? And they like us so much. Aww. <laughs> I don't believe you. We did it first. Dude. So there's a guy that's called, uh, that does, that's Cody that does the alternate history hub YouTube. He actually went over every state flag in their meeting. And he's just like, you know, the star on California's flag is because Texas. I'm like, yep. <laughs> well, it's kind of like how UT, um, so UT Austin's colors are orange and white. Well, the University of Tennessee, their colors are also orange and white. And their university was founded after ours. And they specifically did it because there's this constant feud between Texas and Tennessee. Um, I don't know if you you know the, the state song, the Yellow Rose of Texas, but the last line of it is the Yellow Rose of Texas beats the bells of Tennessee. And it has literally been an ongoing feud for like hundreds of years. And it makes zero sense because nobody cares. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, but it's just... Is that a reference to Tennessee whores as well? Yes. Yes. I mean, because I know what the Yellow Rose of Texas is. Yeah. I think we all know what that song's about. Yeah. And if you don't, yeah. you need to do some research. But I mean, uh -huh. you know, in the 1800s, you didn't have anything else to do. There was no TV. What are you going to do? Your states are going to drink. Fight. You know. Fight, yeah. Another Find the thing. people up in the floor of Congress, you know. That's, I'm gonna go that's back when men were dueled in Congress. That are in the bath. I'll be back. All right. So she's gonna go drown some children. La llorona, llorona. 
<laughs> if she's wearing a white dress, get the children away from her. Uh, she's she's a monster. That's who she. That's her character. She's our. She's already. Oh heck! What is her character name again? She's a Rizalka, so drowning drowning people is her thing. Oh, uh, Rizalka. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Only yeah. reason I don't get drowned is I don't have a soul that works out well. Alrighty. Anyway, yeah, moving on to drowning. Something over there. Listeners, those of you who really really like um, pecan praline will love this. It is pecan praline. Whiskey and cream liqueur. And oh my God, this stuff would make... My brother gave me this and he told me, I need to get this and one other. I have the coffee liqueur in the other room and make a, um, a white Russian with it. <laughs> and so I'm going to, but until then, this is the best thing I've ever had to put in coffee. Like Bailey's, there's no reason to buy Bailey's now. This is it. This is the thing. And uh, oh my god, it's delicious. So yeah, I'm having pecan praline whiskey and cream liqueur. Wow. It's fancy. I'm curious, but a little scared. <laughs> oh, if you if you like, like pecan coffee is pretty good, but this would make any coffee pecan coffee. They've really got a good flavor in here. I will keep that in mind. And it's like, what is it? Like 17% alcohol. So it's pretty good. That's about right, the same, same percentage as a wine, right? Maybe a little higher. A little, a little higher. higher. Ports are about 13%. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty heavy, that's a pretty heavy wine. So yeah, it's like a wine and a half. You have a tiny cup. <laughs> How many yeah. tiny cups do you think I may have already had? I was going to say, he's going through pretty quick. <laughs> I mean, I am using my National Security Intelligence Agency cup. So I, I got, it's an NSA, it's an NSA shot glass. I'm just waiting for him to start drinking straight from the bottle. <laughs> By the, the end of the young. show. <laughs> There we Did go. anybody bring their homework? We're <sighs> watching along. I want to make sure we're 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 covering our bases. Who's got uh, homework? Yeah, I have homework. I have my homework. homework. I got homework. Yay. Who has the best homework? Raise your hand. <clears throat> <laughs> Jack, I saw your hand first. You go first. Oh. Uh, is, it, is it because I'm above her? This is. I'm pretty sure this is all sexist. Uh, okay, ladies first. Ladies first. Uh, just, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Jack, you go first. You had your hand up. All right. So I've been meaning to read this, and I haven't had a time. So this is going to be really short, I'm sure. But uh, it is Steampunk Fairy Tales. It is a book. And essentially, it's little short stories that are eh, they're based on a lot of the same um, kind of... Um, Grimm's fairy tale kind of thing. The uh, but they're they're differently named. The stories are pretty decent from just looking over them here. I mean, I'm, I am interested in them. Uh, the back says uh, "Strange Magic." A toy shop owner builds a pair of magic clockwork dolls that delight a factory town. A three-inch tall samurai faces a giant iron ogre with only a sewing needle and a coin. A scientist seeks an antidote to his formula gone wrong. With the help of his partner's beautiful daughter. All of these stories and more are included in the steampunk fairy tales, written by authors from three different continents. Each enchanting tale combines the futuristic Victorian concept of steam and fashion with memorable stories. From the recognizable Jack and the Beanstalk to perhaps the unfamiliar works from many other countries. So it's kind of a steampunk take on uh, a lot of little fairy, fairy tales. So it's not necessarily based on Grimm, but just on fairy just, tales yeah. in general. I think I think they're not dark, very dark. Um, just from what I got from just kind of flipping through, it would be just fine for me to read to my eight-year-old. And uh, that's, I mean, not not all steampunk has to be Cthulhu, but uh, 
<laughs> as much as true, we like it. <laughs> There's only so after you've met Cthulhu a couple times and had a couple beers with him, you know, it's, it's kind of like it's just nothing's that scary afterwards anymore. But that's what I've been saying. Steampunk can be so many things. It doesn't have to I be, know. you know. So yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I've never heard. Is that new or? Um, it's. Let's see here. Give us a nice timing on it. 2016, actually. And I only found it recently. And those of you who are in Steam Chest will be getting a copy of this shortly. So don't all of y'all run out and just buy it. Awesome. Um, so. Yay. Cool. That and that's good, it. Actually. That was fast. I'm sorry. Next time I'll... Uh... <laughs> I swear I have more. It's just I can't go into any detail. <sighs> I didn't find that cool website again. You know? The next, the next cool like, I can't stay on top forever. You guys are going to beat me out. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, Blue Stocking, you you uh, had your hand up second, so uh, you want to go? <laughs> yes. Or you can okay. pass, wh whichever you like. Nope, I I'll try to keep it succinct. I, it's not I'm not really good at that, but um, so the end of December. Um, well, let me start off by saying there's a series of books called the Invisible Library series. Um, I never got a chance to do this on my show, and I wish I had, but at the end of December, the final book, the eighth book in the series was published. Uh, the books are by Genevieve Cogman, and personally, they're important because they're going to be part of my dissertation, but essentially, these books are about a, a library. It's, it's a library with a capital L, the library. It's a library that holds together a infinite multiverse. And the books center on one particular person. Her name um, is Irene. And Irene Winters is the librarian that is the protagonist. And these are, these are librarian spies. They are agents of the library. And her home world is a steampunk Victorian world. Um, and one of her compatriots is a knockoff of Sherlock Holmes. Um, but what they have to do, the librarians go out into this multiverse and they have to get original books from these universes and bring them back to the library in order to maintain stability of the multiverse. But there are dragons and there are fairies within all of these worlds. And the dragons are creatures of high order. And there are fairies that are creatures of extreme chaos. And so in worlds where the dragons are plentiful the world is very high order in worlds where the fairies hold sway the world is chaotic and wild and so they have to try to maintain a balance um but the librarians will go out into these worlds sometimes they'll get the books by asking uh but most of the time they steal them and there are you know wild adventures when they go out and they have to steal these books but the books that they get like um Grim fairy tales, for example, the grim fairy tales exist in a whole lot of worlds. And in one world, they had to get a copy that had one story that was only available in the grim book, the original book in one world. It didn't exist, and the story didn't exist in any other grim editions in any other worlds. But that was needed to maintain stability for this multiverse. But it's like I said, there some of the worlds are steampunk, some of them are high tech or what we would consider cyberpunk. And what makes it so much fun is her trying interacting with all these characters and the the ploys and the things that she has to go through to get these books. And especially when she interacts with the fairies, because the fairies are if you're interested in narrative and storytelling, the fairies are creatures of narrative. So they are archetypes. There is the Cardinal, who is the religious archetype, and they play to their story. And anyone who, any human who comes into their orbit will get sucked into the story if they're not careful and become a player in the story unwillingly. So it's, it's a really good series about the way we see literature and the way narrative works and how these archetypes have entered our consciousness over, you know, a thousand years. So 
it's just it's a beautiful series and like i said we it's, she says that she's done but maybe not so it's and they're you know they're quick reads the audiobooks are really good too if that's your jam the audiobooks are brilliant um but they're just like I said they're her her main world is a steampunk world you know but and there's airships and you know all the exciting things that we like but it's it's going back and forth through these different worlds and try to trying to save the universe and there's alchemy which I love alchemy and my steampunk so you know that's always a good time but I <laughs> I think y'all I think everybody would really enjoy it it's it's exciting and it's fun and you know I mean secret agent librarians yeah you know. I was like to say it's almost like the mummy I'm a librarian. It's, it's so good. And there's one part, I can't remember which book it was, but they're talking about how they're going to need to send in the librarian strike team alpha. <laughs> there's a librarian strike team. <laughs> Librarians have a, have a SWAT team. Yes, there is a librarian strike team that had to come in and cleanse the situation. So it's, it's bananas, but it's just, it makes you think about literature and how we all view it and, you know, how, literature can hold a universe together mm -hmm. literature keeps a universe a world stable and we need these stories in our lives and there there is they do bring in um like some of the grim fairy tales come into it which obviously you know appeals to me but it's just there's a reason i'm using it for my dissertation because it also involves libraries that are keeping information from the regular people because humans don't know about the library Dragons and fairies know about it, but most humans don't know about it. It's a secret. So when humans How much of this out revolves around the Vatican? Library. Huh? No, there's the Vatican. Well, I mean, it, it, the Vatican probably exists in many of the universes, but they don't. Like I said, there's a, the cardinal archetype of the fairies, mm. but the religion doesn't really play into it. So, yeah. Oh. But it's... No, I think Jack was meaning the library in the Vatican. <laughs> which is secret and we can't look at. Yep. Yeah. No, it's it's the same kind of situation. It's there are secrets, and the, in the eighth book, we finally because I've been dying. The eighth book, we finally find out what is going on and where this library came from, who created it, and why. And you know the because inevitably, when you have a secret organization, it's going to be corrupted. I mean, it's just anything like this, a big, the big, you know, capital S secret corruption is going to creep in mm -hmm. and it's going to be very it's going to end very far from where it started so that's yeah it's it's definitely worth the read and i highly recommend the whole series it was just it's fun like if they would make this into a tv show it would be it would be awesome huh so, you should have started yeah. with the corruption now i'm interested <laughs> yeah now i'm just like I'm, <clears throat> well because the way it works the librarians all the librarians are literally bound to the library to the point that they all have a brand across their shoulder, an alchemical brand on their shoulder blades. And they can speak a capital L language and let, lets them push people to do what they want to do. If they swear something in the language, they cannot go against it. You know, it's so the language is, is how they function and how they operate. It's and it to anybody that hears it. It sounds like it sounds like it's coming through in whatever their native language is. But it's yeah. So there's there's like I said, there are secrets in the heart of the library, and it's it's so much fun. It really is. So you know, I love it. I love some of these <laughs> ideas. Yeah, it was it was really good. It was not what I was expecting when I started it, but highly recommend the Invisible Library series. Genevieve Cogman. All eight books are out now, and she's actually a really nice person. I've chatted with her a few times on Twitter. She's really sweet. So. And she seemed excited that I was using her books in my dissertation. So, Aww, <laughs> yeah. That is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That was my homework. Thank you. <laughs> that was really good homework. <laughs> Thank you. I, I really appreciate you on the show because you read a lot more than I do. <laughs> and I, I want the show to talk about books, but I cannot do it. <laughs> I try. I don't read nearly as much as I used to because it's all school reading now, but yeah, some of these, the steampunky ones, yeah, I, I will make time. So, I like it. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like it too because I need I need more people feeling out good books because I've run into too many bad books lately, and now here I am again reading more like financial books and mm -hmm. literally actually books I haven't read yet. I have my 
phone sitting on right now, which is the trilogy of Thrawn that I haven't got to read yet from Star Wars. And uh, so those, some of us would know what that is. But yeah, so I, he's written three books over the last five years. I've only read like half of one of them. I've only had time to. Now I have all of them sitting here from like Christmases and birthdays and just keep Aww. looking at them every night going, one day I'll be not tired enough when I go to bed to read some of this. What I did, I made myself every night for at least five minutes. I do pleasure reading before I go to bed. I started that when I started school because I was reading so much heavy mm-hmm. duty stuff that when I started school, five at least five minutes every night before I turn out the lights. And it actually helped a lot. My problem is if I sit down with a book, I will pass out on the book <laughs> right now. <laughs> that, there's that problem too. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I don't read, I watch a lot of TV. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we were out of internet for a whole day on Tuesday, two weeks ago. The horror. <laughs> we're sitting in front of the TV going, it doesn't work. <laughs> I had to dig up my old DVDs and find something fun to watch, which ended up being really cool because i i uh pulled out a movie i'd seen so long ago and forgot how much i loved it and i'm not going to tell you what it is i'm going to give you some clues first to show you how awesome it is it's gonna it's got ian mckellen in it tim curry peter boyle if you don't know who he is he was on uh everybody loves raymond he was like the dad, the big doll guy. He was also Frankenstein in Mel Brooks, Young Frankenstein. Or not Frankenstein. He was the monster. Um, yeah, okay. He was in the Santa Claus and the second one. And uh, James Hong has a small role. And I'm just picking out the, the, the people who I, I am very familiar with. Alec Baldwin plays the main character. Does this sound familiar yet? What is his name? Not again. I haven't told you. Oh. Okay. So it's not exactly steampunk, but it fits in with the, uh, um, like the Rocketeer, and uh, um, oh, what was that? That uh, sort of uh, World War One space or not. The Sky like, Captain's World of Tomorrow would fit punk? sort of in there. Kind of diesel punk. Kind of. Uh, Adam punk would be would be closer if you want to split hairs. But there's a little... Baldwin punk. 1920s style. So stylish. Had a lot of uh, uh, art deco in, in, in the movie. Does this, it, still not a clue? Okay. It's a superhero movie before DC and Marvel started making movies. It was based on an old Black radio Mask? program. Black Mask? Nope. What I'm talking Ooh. about is The Shadow. <laughs> okay, yeah, Alec Baldwin. Yeah, I knew Alec Baldwin was okay. <laughs> Do you guys remember this movie? It has Vague. been forever. My dad yeah. loved The Shadow as the comic and the, TV and the cartoon. I remember, I think I may have seen it because he's wearing purple, right? Uh, Is it a purple it's, cape? Or? Depending on, you know, um, depending on the scene and the lighting, but uh, he's in black, but there's a lot okay. of, you know, purple colors <laughs> in the scene when he's doing his mysterious uh, powers and, and what have you. Uh, the Shadow uh, used to be a radio program first. And so this movie really plays a lot on uh, classic radio and classic uh, movies. Uh, if, if you look it up on uh, Wikipedia or uh, IMDb, uh, a lot of the pictures in it are black and white. And it looks like, oh, this is, this is an old black and white film. The movie's not in black and white. They just chose to post these pictures this way. And it's awesome. It's uh, it's silly. Sometimes it doesn't make any sense. Tim Curry is amazing. 
Tim Curry's uh, always amazing. <laughs> uh, where, where, where can I start with this thing? Um, I mean, it's all star cast. Uh, so, so all, all the characters are just, just dead on. Um, Tim Curry plays the, uh, the sort of lascivious, um, toady of the, the main villain who is, uh, the character is Shiwan Khan, the last descendant of, of, uh, Genghis Khan, which is one of those things that doesn't make any sense. If you know anything about Genghis Khan, there will never be a last descendant of Genghis Khan. <laughs> He has so many, every like how yeah, many people yeah. in the world are descended from him? Twelve percent of the entire population <laughs> of the planet is descended from Genghis Khan. But that's not important. Anyway. The important thing is it wrote well in this radio program or this movie that based on a radio program. <laughs> it's so fun. So fun. Uh the shadow uh yeah, it's is based on a radio program. After World War One, the, the in the in the, the world, the the main character, who's sort of like a Batman character, but uh, after World War One, he uh, is over in the Far East, becoming this this uh, opium drug lord. So he's he's a bad guy, Lamont Cranston, uh, and he uh, he is basically kidnapped by this Tibetan monk who has superpowers and taught taught out of his evil ways and and shown how to be a, a, a hero. But he knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men because he has been evil. And uh, so he learns the arts of uh, mesmerization and hypnotism uh, which aren't anything like hypnotism in real life. <laughs> They're more of a psychic power that lets you fog men's minds and allows him to be invisible and uh, allows him to let make you see things that aren't really there. It's a, it's a, it's a vague sort of superpower that they can kind of <laughs> make do whatever they want. Uh, but that's just part of the, that's that part of the, the genre um, that you just have to buy into as you watch this movie and it's it's beautiful like like i said it's uh 1920s you got your classic cars but not real cars more like stylized fake cars <laughs> yeah I mean, they're far more fashionable than real cars ever were <laughs> yeah they're like concept cars yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's a it's an imagined world that you wish was the 1920s, and everything <laughs> is art uh, art deco, and uh, all the women it's are beautiful. Art deco than art deco. Oh, <laughs> uh, but man, I love this movie, and I can't I... believe I'd not seen it for I don't know, 15, 20 years. Uh, so I, I remember it. I think I've seen it once. Well, I, I I recommend it. Take a look at it again as an adult. I think I watched it when I was like a teenager, and I just thought, you know, it was really cool. But now I recognize all the actors who I didn't know then. Yeah. I I can pick out all these these details that you know were a loss to me as a kid. I just thought it was a good movie. Yeah. I was wrong. It was a really good movie. Woohoo! <laughs> Yeah, it came out in 94, so I was 1994, yeah. Yeah, I was a senior in high school. It was weird. And I probably didn't see it until I hit cable someplace. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Well, cool. I'll have to watch it again. That that is my my recommendation (laughs) for the show. Um, Oh, man, the cinematography. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. There, there's there's this scene where Shiwan Khan, the, the bad guy, uh, is uh, sort of kneeling on the floor and he's wearing this this Tibetan or, or Chinese uh, set of robes that match the tile on the floor. 
and it starts real up close and it zooms out. And at first you don't know what you're looking at until he starts moving and the fabric sort of moves against the, the tile floor. And you're like, is that CGI? What is going on? It, it looks, and it's, it's not, it's just like a really gorgeous piece garment that, that blew my mind for just that, you know, that three <laughs> seconds. Um, I don't know how long it took them to set that up or how many takes it took them to do it. It's really cool. So yeah, you got psychic powers and Asian <laughs> Kung Fu and uh, atomic weapons and crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could go on. Yeah, right. Great movie. Uh... Check it out. That's that's my report for okay. the new year. Nice. <laughs> I will I will look for that on streaming. I guess I'm gonna need to watch that again. I didn't realize Tim Curry's been in damn everything. I mean he pops up everywhere. And he's his characters in each show are like so different. Yeah. Like you, you if you were just to see him in this show, you'd think he he was kind of a greasy, slimy, lascivious little weasel and that would be you know his archetype is that's the character he'd play nope to be fair no, he's, yeah. he's overplaying like an overbearing demon with huge horns and uh uh in some Scared of the, the thing. crap out of me and i loved it i loved legend he could he, he was could the evil guy anything. in home alone too he was in clue i mean hello he was, clue was fantastic he was clue <laughs> i don't think you could have that movie without him no, no. you couldn't mm-hmm. no it was no, one plus two plus two plus one. No, it's two plus one plus one plus two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had the poster that the movie theater was giving away. Yeah. Because we went and saw it in the theater and it was just, yeah, he is. But his le- his character in Legends scared the pants off of me. So, And my stepdad knew it scared me. And so he would hide behind the couch and make like the, le- <laughs> like, the laugh. Yeah. It was so bad. I ended up falling on the floor one time screaming. <laughs> My mom was like, what's going on? And she's like, he was like, we're just playing. <laughs> yeah, it scared me so bad. But yeah, he is, he can meld into any role and just, yeah. Muppet Treasure Island. <laughs> yeah, I forget he's in that. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Clown in the sewer. Oh, Oh, I watched that with my mom when it first aired, and yeah, he was... Have you seen the behind-the-scenes shot of him with the blanket around him holding a cigarette? <laughs> dressed as Pennywise? No. <laughs> yeah. Which takes some of the fear out of it. But yeah, he you put makeup on him, and you can't tell it's him. He's, so, he's that good. Yeah, he's just... Amazing! <laughs> Wow, we actually didn't run over tonight. Everybody did their homework and we still have 10 minutes left. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we, we talked about drinking for a long time, too. Oh, we did. So, something well, else I wanted to something bring something else, else. Oh, go ahead. Um, <laughs> what I really wanted to do, and I pulled this book because, I mean, it's important, but um, I didn't get to watch the movie I wanted to watch to come tell you guys about it. So next time, I'm going to just kind of like get everyone revved up for this. I did not see the aeronauts on HBO. I don't know if any of you guys know about it. It's about, um, oh heck, the guy who plays one of the main characters in the new sequel for, or I guess prequels for Harry Potter. He plays the the one that does the um, that's like the the animal gatherer character, the one that writes the book, the monster book. It's that actor. I can't remember his name. And the woman who played the main female lead in Star Wars Rogue One do a movie about doing like getting in a balloon and going as high as you can go. Oh, we watched that. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, Eddie Eddie Redmayne is. Yeah, Eddie Redmayne. Thanks, Rita. Yeah, so I'm, I'm fan. I'm going to be getting into that, watching and coming back to you with my take on it. So. Yeah, that came out, and I completely forgot about it. And never. Watched. Yeah, because 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 COVID came out. It's 2019. That's what. Yeah. <clears throat> and it just wow. everything kind of went weird. Okay, well, I'll watch it too. 
we'll have a it's on hbo i think right yeah it's on hbo okay we were watching uh the rest of we were watching I think we were just finishing The Expanse, and it came out as a as a as a preview for it on HBO for some random reason. Where I'm I'm completely off. It might have been something else we were watching, but it came on. And we're like, why haven't we seen this? First yeah, off, it's the girl from Rogue One, and it's Eddie Redmayne, and it's about balloons in like the late 1800s. It yeah. just got lost. I watched straight it. up a movie I, I need to be know. watching. I don't know how I saw it. I have I have Netflix and Amazon Prime, and that's it. But I, I know I saw that movie. Since you're about to see it, it was me, an Amazon let me, movie. Let me say, don't worry That's about why. the dog. It's on Amazon. I'm it's wrong. An, Nothing bad Amazon. happens to the dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, okay. They play with your feelings a little bit there at the beginning, but he'll be okay. I'm sure. Yeah, it was an Amazon Prime, which is why you saw it on the Expanse because it's an yeah. Amazon Prime movie. Yeah, yeah. I remember there was a whole big fanfare about it, and then the world collapsed, and you know. I was like, oh, it's a steampunk movie. <laughs> yeah. COVID. <laughs> yeah. It was Although, as all are keeping up with the expanse, it is it is mm, great a awesome if you like science if you like more realistic science fiction. It's brilliant in so many ways. I cannot even begin to describe how amazing the expanse is. <laughs> I want to take I mean if you just took it's kinda like Dune. If you took the way the if you took all the characters and just put them in a completely different setting, it would still fit. Like, um, it really feels to me like old world trying to colonize the new world and all it's, the issues that happened. Well, and that's then, exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Or you could stick them in a medieval setting as well, or you could stick it into a super hyper futuristic setting or a modern setting. The characters are really what make the story go. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the 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 way they've put the um, the hard science fiction in it. It just it just pops correctly. Yeah, Dax, have you seen the? Have you watched the Expanse at all? Uh, we watched the first. I think we went through three seasons, um, and then moved on to other things and haven't come back. No, okay. not because we didn't I, like it, just because there's yeah. a lot of things. Well, you need to go back. <laughs> So it, to be fair, it, it it kind of the uh, I understand the feeling of the, the slog through kind of season three, yeah, but because like bit, season but... one, for like the first half a season, you're just like all this stuff has no connection, and yeah. then you get to like the last episode, it's like holy yeah. crap, it all it yeah. all comes together, and then season two is fixing all that problem, and then you get kind of this breath in season three where they're doing the long game of setting up the next like literally they're taking three books. And setting up yeah. the plot line, and it's a lot. It, it it's little tiny breadcrumbs getting getting you there, but five and six go real fast. Yeah, and Christian is my favorite. I love that woman so much. Oh, um, she drummer? is no Christian. The um, Christian. the president of the oh gosh, Shore, she is loose. every time she's on stage. Christian uh, of she is so, she's so great. Yeah, Funny of enough, yeah, all of her um, jewelry. Sorry, I froze. I don't know if I'm still here or not. No, you're here. <laughs> okay, all of her jewelry is hers. Um, she actually got in trouble transferring it back and forth across uh, the Canadian border because <laughs> they thought she was purchasing it and didn't pay taxes on it. Oh, and no. <laughs> yeah, there, there was a lot of a lot of fun with that. And so they actually had to get costume jewelry for her for the rest of the uh, the next few seasons. But pretty much all the clothes you see her in in the first two okay. seasons are all hers. They're, yeah, um, she is. Yeah. yeah, that woman is. And she actually I, my brother and I were talking about it on Twitter. And I said something about Shora Dashalu and how much how much I loved her. And she liked my tweet. <laughs> and my awesome. brother was like, "Did you see this?" I'm like, yeah, I saw this. <laughs> it's a screenshot moment right there. Yes, I saved it. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really like Thomas Jane. The, yeah, he was the actor. He he was what what really drove me for season one, and I miss him. Yeah, um, I do too. We, yeah, we really wish that they. Yeah, that it was very sad. I mean, we got him to come back in and out, but yeah, he was. Because I read the first, I read the first three books, and that first book is just it blew my mind. I don't usually read a lot of science fiction; it's not 
it's not for me. But yeah, that first book just because I saw the ad for it on Sci Fi because it was coming out. And I'm like, okay, this looks. <laughs> you're gonna need to you're gonna need to investigate this. And the um the writers are. They uh, worked with George R. R. Martin because it's two writers. They worked with George R. R. Martin, and yeah. they've written some of the episodes of the ser- over the the course of the series. They've written a lot of episodes, and yeah, that first book just blew my mind. It was so good. It was just. Was I want to go back and read them, but I'm kind of saddened that my favorite character in the entire show isn't really a, a singular character. She's like eight different characters. It's Who? um, it's drummer. She's oh, actually drummer. written around multiple different characters yeah. because they don't translate well to television in the way that they've had to kind of dumb it down a little bit. Yeah. So that she's an amalgamation of multiple different characters. Yeah. Well, I like her character on the screen, but yeah, no, the expanse is, I'm glad they were able to finish it out that Amazon brought it and let them play it out. So. Yeah. I want I want some sort of extended series. Give me give me any character. I don't care who we follow. I just love <laughs> I love the universe. Uh, well, yeah, I guess anybody, it's uh, moving on toward that time. Anybody well, got anything else? Uh, uh, I did want to mention uh, one of our listeners, Vi Sci Fi. Uh, texted us or, or sent us a little message a month ago now because we haven't had a show since then um, and suggested to me, hey, look up this thing to find uh, other suggestions on things to talk about on the show. And I, I just wanted to show I just wanted to give the this resource because we're not going to talk about all the things that are here. Um, but he said uh, in his neck of the woods, he's in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh there is a meetup group. Remember meetup.com? That was a thing. Uh, there's a meetup group that uh, is there called 505 Steampunk. And uh, they, they have, you know, like regular discussions about, oh, check this new thing out. Check out this other thing. These are the things that are going on in Steampunk that they are running across. Uh, okay. Which is pretty cool. Um, let me just... Uh, grab this link here and send it into the comments. So if you're in Shove New Mexico, uh, this is a good place to uh, meet new people. And uh, if you're not, it's still a good place to you know, follow their discussions and see what links they, they link to. And I'm going to be following them so I can find something to talk about on this show. On occasion. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I wanted to throw that up there. I want to thank Vi Sci-Fi for making that suggestion. Uh, that yeah, that that's cool. I I love the feedback when anybody has anything to suggest to us. I want to oh, yeah. make sure we share that. Definitely. Very cool. Thank you. Okay, so I'll start the, the end of the show spiel. Um, we want to thank, of course, our patrons who are uh, allowing us to keep this show going and we're, we're using your, your patronage to host the uh, podcast on podbean.com. So thank you. Uh, the Dowager Der- Duchess, Claire bear, uh, Jenny and Ryan Shaver, uh, Kitty Vincent, who has listened and, and commented tonight. So I know she's uh, listening and Rita and Lawrence Allen, uh, who are always our best listeners. Uh, Thank you for listening and and throwing us a buying us a beer once a month, uh, as we say, so we can keep hosting this. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Texas Steampunk Connection. If you're not watching us live, that's where we are. Um, you can email us at Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com. Um, I mentioned our our podcast on Texas Steampunk Connection dot podbean dot com. And we're on Twitter at TX Steam Connect One. Our music is brought to you by Zapsplat.com. So, all right. Uh, anything else anybody have to, to add to the show? Oh, what a good way to start the year. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, and let's all hope that this new year brings something better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I heard that joke about <laughs> it, this being 2020. Two. Two. But yeah. <laughs> we're hoping that's not going to be. Avoid we want that. something, something better. <laughs> something better. Something new and exciting and different. But not too exciting. We've, we've had some exciting things. Exciting that in a good we didn't way. Enjoy. Good, good exciting. exciting. <laughs> Positive, yes. Positive exciting. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, until next time, mind your gauges. Have a good night, everybody. Night, y'all. Good night.